Fallout 4! Let's not even waste time, folks, diving right into this one. So if you've never played Fallout before, think Skyrim, but post-apocalyptic instead of medieval. It's developed by Bethesda, who has a fairly impressive track record. This game is pedigree. It took five years to make and took E3 2015 by storm. I saw this and had to go get a new pair of pants from the utter excitement I had for this title. The plot is a simple one just like the other recent fallouts. Our son has been kidnapped and our wife killed, so we need to go handle business. However, unlike 3 in New Vegas, we have a pre-made character in this game. Allow me to explain. In Fallout 3, you were an ordinary 19-year-old vault citizen who left to find your dad. In Fallout New Vegas, you were a courier wronged on a job seeking payback. In Fallout 4, you were a veteran soldier in a loving marriage with a wife and son. You work as a lawyer and are respected enough in your community to be giving speeches at conferences. Do you notice how the last one has a little bit more? Your character also has a voice this time around as well. This makes it that much harder to project myself in the role of the blank slate. In 3 in New Vegas, without having a voice, I could imagine the plethora of chat options being said however I imagined them being said. This allowed me to fill in more blanks and picture these things being said how I would want them said, or just how I would say them in general. When the character has a voice, you lose that. All I've done in this game is choose a name, appearance, and either disagree or agree with whatever's going on at the time. This feels like Bethesda's character instead of my own. It feels like in Bethesda's efforts to give us an awesome crafting system, they forgot about dialogue. Your dialogue options are limited to yes, no, maybe, and sarcasm or getting more info. Every now and then you get the chance to play a speech check and get another choice, however that for the most part you're limited to the above mentioned four choices. It may be a little hard to understand what I'm getting at, but I feel the example of when the lone survivor confronts Kellogg is the best to describe what I'm getting at. In this scene, the lone survivor gets to say either yes, no, maybe, or ask for more information about the events that have transpired. I replayed a couple times, but all the results were the same. I had to kill Kellogg. Now take for example Fallout New Vegas when the courier confronts Benny. You can kill him there, negotiate with him, lure him in a secluded area. If you're a female, you can even sleep with him. The point is there are so many more options than just combat and the other fallouts compared to this one. Now dialogue isn't the only thing that's been removed from the game. The faction system from New Vegas has also been greatly diminished as well. You've got the Institute, the Railroad, the Brotherhood, and the Minutemen. Two of those groups have little to nothing to do with the main story. To illustrate my point, there's a bit in the beginning when you reach Concord and come up to a battle in progress. Without knowing anything going on, there were already raiders tagged red, which means enemy. Again, had this been 3 or New Vegas, I can't help but feel an NPC would have come up to me and I'd be able to choose which side to aid or come to a non-violent solution altogether. I don't know why this sort of content has been subtracted from the series. As for more lost content, I'd like to direct you to the companions. In 3 and New Vegas, your dog counted as something aside from the other companions you had access to in the game. In 4, the dog counts as a full companion. However, the dog does do a little bit more this time, as the dog can pin enemies down, keeping them restrained while you get in free shots. Your other companions all have their own unique specialties as well. Take, for example, Nick Valentine's ability to hack terminals for you. Now, this trivializes much of the leveling, as you don't need to level any form of lockpicking or hacking. You can just have someone else do it for you. Combat has remained largely unchanged from the previous titles. One of the newest additions is the change to the power armor. To be blunt, it actually feels like powered armor in this game. In 3 New Vegas, any time I had it, I felt like I was just equipping another piece of gear. This time around, however, it sits around kind of like an Iron Man suit. You have to enter it, fuel it, and you get a new HUD anytime you're in the power armor. Now, you get this at the beginning of the game, and some players have found this questionable. I don't think it's that big of a deal. When a game gives you all the tools it has to offer early on, the developers can manage difficulty around that. By giving us the power armor so early and showing us we can upgrade it, Bethesda can now make the game harder to account for us having access to the power armor whether we choose to use it or not. Good management of your power armor can make this game much easier. Poor management can make it much harder. Aside from the power armor, the crafting system has been completely overhauled. No longer do you have to hunt down every bottle of turpentine to finish whatever item you need to finish. Now all items offer certain materials like gears or cloth. And it's from those gears and cloth you construct items and settlements. And I did say settlements. You get to minecraft your own cities that grow in size to be bigger than any of the pre-made cities like Good Neighbor or Diamond City Market. My only complaint is you have to actually walk everywhere you want to place anything. I think it could have been a lot better had we been given an overhead view to work with. Also, there isn't much of a tutorial outside of the first few items to build. The game pretty much gives you a box of toys and lets you figure everything out on your own. I have to say, the game looks pretty good as well. Graphically, it isn't much better than 3 or New Vegas, and there's certainly prettier looking games around. But... Well, take a look at the Deathclaw. This thing screams danger. Everything animates more animalistic and predatory. No longer does it running around trying to give the player a hug, instead now it prowls around and pounces at prey. The feral ghouls are another fine example. Now, mileage may vary. 
I always thought of them as zombies to begin with. Now, they behave more like mindless raging zombies. I love this. Fallout 4 is good, but by taking away a lot of the content that made the older ones so fantastic, they may have alienated certain audience members. I read a lot of reviews about this, and while they're mostly positive, some reviewers have gone so far as to say this isn't a Fallout game. It simply looks like one. I wholeheartedly disagree. It's just a changed game. It isn't 3 or New Vegas, this is Fallout 4. It's the crafting one. Personally, I prefer New Vegas more as I like factions and dialogue trees, but Fallout 4 is not a bad game. It has plenty of content to keep you occupied, and unless you're one of those close-minded zealots of the old games, I can't see a reason not to recommend it. Try it out.